My name is Elaine Rubin and I am the Senior Contributor and Communication Specialist here at Advisors. I have worked in this field for more than 10 years, including some time with the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Federal Student Aid, and also some time working as a regulatory analyst. So I have really looked in depth and dealt with the laws, the regulations, as well as working with people and understanding the questions that they have, the troubles that they face, and different ways I've been able to help them and provide them advice. Today I'm pretty excited because it's all about co-signers. Being asked to be a co-signer comes with a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of things that you might not think to ask or know to ask right when you get started. Being a co-signer really means that you're equally as responsible to repay that loan. Now, a lot of people already know that. That's the common knowledge when it comes to co-signing on a loan. But what some people mix up sometimes is feeling like they're not it's not their loan, it's not their problem. They're gonna be asking the borrower to make the payments, not me. That's how things should work in a perfect world. If you've co-signed on a loan, maybe you never hear from the lender that there are issues with the loan because the borrower is keeping up their end of the deal and they're making their payments on time and they're making sure they're managing their own debt. But as a co-signer, you are assuming some risk. You are assuming the role of stepping in if the borrower is unable to make those payments. So you can't just co-sign a loan and step away and forget it. That's the number one mistake co-signers make, especially if their borrower starts to fall into trouble. If an undergraduate student is looking to take out a private student loan to help pay for their college costs, Generally, an undergraduate student could be coming right out of high school. They haven't taken the time to establish their credit yet because they maybe are just starting that journey. They're 18 years old now. So a lot of undergraduate students can't always borrow private student loans on their own. And they sometimes need the help of a parent, family member, or any adult for that matter, to help them qualify for a private student loan if that's what they're looking to borrow. If you're asked to be a co-signer on a student loan, you know, there are some things that you want to consider. Both the private student loan market and the federal student loans, including the PLUS loan, so that's your parent PLUS or your graduate PLUS loan, do allow opportunities for borrowers to obtain a co-signer in order to gain eligibility. When it comes to private student loans, co-signers can help borrowers actually qualify for the loan and even a lower interest rate or maybe a no origination or loan fees in order to get that loan. If you are still in that process of determining if you should co-sign a loan or not, then you definitely want to, you know, do a lot of research and you want to work with that borrower whoever it is asking you. You wanna see the different types of loans that they're looking at. You wanna see if the loans they're looking at have co-signer release options, what those terms and conditions are. And you also wanna have a conversation with that borrower about expectations. You want to make sure you establish that the borrower has to have an open line of communication with you at all times when it comes to this debt. Um, you know, if you're helping someone borrow for their undergraduate degree and they're going in as a freshman, they might not even have to start making payments on that loan until, sit, until they graduate or even six months after they graduate. So it could be four and a half years, five, five and a half years before they even start repaying that loan. And some of the repayment terms can be pretty long, maybe at least 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. So you wanna make sure that this, the person you're co-signing a loan for is someone that you trust, someone you know how to contact, someone who you expect to be in your life for the long term. If you're working with a lender to refinance your house or even just buy a house and you need to get a mortgage, if you're looking to buy a car, they're gonna look at your credit. And that co-signed private student loan for somebody else will show up in your credit report. So, yes, you're not the borrower. However, as a co-signer, you agree to be responsible to repay that debt. Lenders understand that you're that second line of defense to have that loan paid off. However, because you're only second in line to help pay off that debt, 
they're gonna consider that as debt that belongs to you. So you wanna make sure it's someone you know how to contact, have their phone number, their address, anything you need to make sure you have a, a way to contact them. And you wanna be fairly confident that you'll be able to contact them in the future. And if you are agreeing or looking to be a co-signer with someone, know the loan that they're borrowing. Make sure you understand the terms. Are there things like co-signer release options? Most private student loan lenders will offer some sort of co-signer release, but you wanna make sure as the co-signer, it's your responsibility to understand what that means, what conditions need to be met, what sort of payments need to be made, and what can break that co-signer release option. Co-signer release, if you don't know what that is, is essentially just, it just means if you meet a certain set of criteria, the borrower's making on-time payments for a certain period of time, that maybe you as a co-signer can then be removed as a co-signer from that loan, meaning you'll no longer have a responsibility to repay that loan with the borrower. But you need to understand the terms. There are things with a co-signer release option that could terminate that that ability in general. For example, there are some co-signer release options that require the borrower to make on-time payments and not to miss any, and they have to be consecutive. So what you want to do as the co-signer is understand that, ask the lender, can I create my own account as a co-signer in order to make sure that my borrower is making those payments? Also, when you're co-signing loans, Make sure the amount you're co-signing for is something you're comfortable repaying. That's quite often overlooked. Um, sometimes the total amount you even the borrower even needs co-signed isn't even part of the discussion. You'd be surprised how many times that happens. Ask how much the borrower needs. If that borrower's borrowing thirty thousand dollars in private student loans, and that's not something you feel like you can comfortably repay then you should not be co-signing a loan for that amount. Keep that in mind, have those conversations and really understand what the borrower is doing. Just do not sign things without knowing what you're signing. Or maybe you're a co-signer and the borrower did run into some trouble. That person who borrowed that loan wasn't making their payments on time, put their loan in a deferment, somehow eliminated that co-signer release, or maybe that loan never even had a co-signer release to begin with. That does happen sometimes as well and you really need that off your credit report. There are things that you can do, but you're gonna have to work with the borrower. When you're talking about private student loans, there are some options to refinance that loan. What essentially that does is the borrower has to go off and qualify for a new loan on their own or with another co-signer. That's the greatest thing about this option is that you don't have to be the co-signer on the new loan. That borrower can seek out if maybe they're married now, if their spouse is willing to be a co-signer, maybe another parent, another family member. If there's someone else that they can work with and re to refi and qualify for that refi, now that new loan pays off the loan that you co-signed and you're no longer the co-signer on that loan. So that's a way that you can get out of co-signing even if you don't have a co-signing release. It does require some action on the borrower, however, just you need to know that. The borrower will have to be the one to refinance their loan. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video today. To catch new videos and updates, be sure to subscribe here. Also, for more detailed information, come check us out at advisors.com.